Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> um, can you see me? Am I here? Am I there? Am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where are we? Where are you guys? Where is everybody? <laughs> uh, all right. Can you see me? Everything is going well. Live stream is going well. Um, there's some lag, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Yes. Okay. So, sorry for the delay. I was getting myself some uh, tea in this huge cup. <laughs> so that's a lot of tea. I may need to take a bathroom break halfway through this. Oh, there's a lot of people here. Good morning. Uh, all right. Let me let me get let me get a little bit of this out of the way. I got I got some tea. The sticker says, "We are born wise. We are born complete." How beautiful is that, huh? Huh? I think that's one of the nice things that I like about tea, like the, all these like inspirational quotes that they come on the sticker. <laughs> oh, the, the chat is booming. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever you guys are dialing in from. I've been chatting before a little bit with people from Indonesia, from Mumbai, from Brazil from oh, all over the world, from Chicago, where apparently it's snowing right now. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of crazy, but I mean, if you have to be on lockdown before, because of all this situation, I better, better have the weather be sucky outside and like nice and warm like it is here today. <sighs> okay, I see a lot of familiar people on the chat. I've seen... Daniel and Hari Prashat before. I see uh, a lot of people from previous uh, streams. Welcome again. I'm very happy to have you here. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, and um, so what are we doing today? Um, well, first of all, I would like to thank I would like to thank last week I made a call for collaboration and contributions if people wanted to like give a hand I had a lot of tasks related to um, doing cleaning up grasshopper definitions so that we could publish them online um, working with the videos and chopping and editing um, and a lot of people reach out to me um, and offer their help so we now have a small team of interested people who are working on making these things and I so I want to thank I want to thank very strongly uh, Rami and I want to thank WatchTech who have been working with me on cleaning up the grasshopper definitions, making them a bit more legible. And uh, as soon as as soon as I decide, then where are we migrating this channel to, and like how are we going to handle file sharing, like whether if it's a GitHub repo or what it is, I will make an announcement and we will publish all the files of all previous um, of all the previous of all the previous streams and we will attach them correctly to the videos. We also haven't published the videos because we're still figuring out a nice workflow to, um, to take the whole raw chunk and chop it in parts and like um, and make it the video. But actually I've been working with Rami a lot and I don't know if he's here, uh, but if you're here, say hi. Uh, and we actually came up with a very nice workflow where we're actually using Grasshopper. To, um, to help like in the chopping and in like the reshuffling and reordering. Uh, so <laughs> I'm very excited about that. It's really, really fun. Uh, and I may actually, I may actually do a small piece at some point where we share that workflow for those of you who might be interested in like very optimized and very nerdy video editing in a way, right? Uh, so I want to give a shout out to, to both Remy and WatchTech, they've been very helpful, and to Daniel and Hari Prasad, who have also manifested their intention to helping and they have been part of this conversation. Um, uh, so, I want to do, I want to give a shout out to, let me open, let me open a Firefox, let me open a browser here, um, and let me go to the live stream videos. I want to give a shout out to some, oh, look, we're live right now. <laughs> and I want to give a shout out to a 
to somebody, I, I forget his name. I'm really bad at names, sorry guys. Uh, but here, if I go to newer first, I wanna give a shout out to Galiaf Beliki. I don't know if you are here, but uh, remember how last week we did this exercise where we replicated the Berlin Holocaust Memorial Museum, but we did it purely in C sharp. As a, as a continuation of the exercises that we had done before, we had used vanilla grasshopper, right? Well, he went ahead and he actually mimicked the same logic of C sharp scripting component, but he translated it to a Python script component, which I think is like a super, super cool thing to do. So I want to thank you here. Uh, and for those of you who want to take a look at that exercise done in Python, you can click on this link here up there. Um, and I may actually, whenever, whenever I start publishing all these files online, I may actually open it up for this kind of contribution. So maybe we have a folder where we have the source files that I did during the, um, during the, um, the, um, during the stream. And then maybe we have a folder inside of that folder that's called contributions. And then maybe people who like extend the exercise or write cool versions of the exercise, maybe they can go there and they can contribute their own extensions and it can be part of like this growing community. Um, so I think that could be cool. Um, so, so yeah, um, anytime you guys want to do any kind of these things, take the code, uh, rewrite it, reshape it, like uh, bake cool geometry and do animations, more than happy to take that. You can post it here on the YouTube video. You can reach out to me over Twitter, Instagram, repost stuff, um, contribute to open source. Uh, all those things are obviously super, super welcome. Um, I see in the chat somebody, do you have a date for when you will start publishing? So I've, I've actually made a personal commitment to, um, to having made a decision about what the future of the channel is going to look like and having that established by next week. So hopefully, if I'm good to my commitments, you can expect during the next live stream to, to get news about where are we migrating the channel, where the videos are, what that's going to look like, and maybe we have like a transition phase where I'm still doing the live streams from my personal YouTube account, but the videos are published directly on the new account and we all migrate for the course, during the course of like three or four weeks maybe, just because um, um, people are used to seeing things in this channel, so it may take time uh, to do like a full transition. But um, but yeah, um, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, I had a few notes of what I wanted to say as well. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I have to I have to do this. Where is where is right now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. It's taking some time to open, <laughs> but this is. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna do a, a really nerdy joke. Uh, are you guys ready for this? <laughs> okay. So this is a friend of mine who sent me this joke. So do you guys know? It's. I think it's a meme somewhere. Do you guys know? what this meme, what this meme means? <laughs> Can you guys guess on the, on the chat? What am I, what is this meme talking about? Especially, this is a, a tip, given the current times and the current situation that we're living. <laughs> I see people already posting. Uh, what if I drew, not the full name, sorry. What if I had removed icons? Huh? Does this sound familiar now? <laughs> yep, exactly. Flatten the curve. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a terrible joke, but I did laugh a lot. Thanks a lot, Viola, <laughs> for sending me this one. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, um, I mean, we have to make something out of these bad times that we're living, right? Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I wonder if we can, I wonder if like, we are now on a graft curve and we that's why we need to flatten it or something. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, 
before I before I go crazy um, with this stupid jokes uh, um, let's get let's get serious and let's do something okay um, so what are we doing today let me minimize all this stuff and let's go back to where where we, okay so what we're gonna do today is we're going to do a small um, in memory of we're gonna do a small homage uh, to John Horton Conway. Um, I don't know if you guys know him, but he was a very well-known mathematician. He used to teach at Princeton. Um, he, I believe he's in, in the math world, he's very well known for math theory and for group theory and for symmetry groups. Um, so he had somehow like interesting theoretical um, mathematics and geometry. Um, and uh, he just happened to pass away last weekend. Um, unfortunately, even due to Corona, to the whole coronavirus in pandemic. So um, I th one of his greatest contributions was what has been named as the game of life. Uh, and the game of life is like this like playful sort of um, uh, idea of like the rules of how life could evolve from cells in, in a grid that um, he studied theoretically, but then when computers kicked in, he was able to simulate it over time and has this form of cellular automation, cellular automata has gained a lot of popularity in games and in like recreational mathematics. Um, and I think it's really, really interesting. So for example, if you, if, uh, no, that's probably in a game of life, let's say online, Simulator, uh, Conway's Game of Life. Let's see. Uh, is this one? This one looks terrible. Um, online Simulator. Ooh, boop, boop, boop. I... Nah, this one is really bad. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Ah, this one. I was looking at this one before. Um, so basically, imagine you have a two-dimensional grid full of cells. Each one of them can be alive or can be dead. Uh, and there are some rules about how from iteration to iteration, uh, borns, uh, cells get born, either stay alive or they die. So you can run these simulations and you can see how um, it's, there are very, there are, they are very simple mathematical rules, but very interestingly, they, um, they form these like really interesting evolutionary patterns. Um, which have oh, have fascinated like a lot of people in recreational mathematics, and they're really interesting. So, for example, if I if I stop, if I clear this thing, and I randomize, like for example, I just start with a random sample. Uh, if I uh, this is just random noise, but if I evolve it under the rules of John Conway's uh, Game of Life, see this kind of like you see you see how it feels like they are these like alive cells that are populating and replicating. It's like it's like bacteria or viruses. This is actually very time, um, very timely, right? Um, so turns out that mimicking this is a very simple exercise. Uh, it's much simpler than it looks like. It's a very interesting one because it requires some um, um, some knowledge of like data structures and um, evolutionary uh, code, which I think is interesting. So I thought. As um, as um, in memory of John Conway, I think we could dedicate this live stream to mimicking um, a game of life simulator in Grasshopper and probably using C# -sharp components, C# -sharp scripting. Um, I think it's an interesting exercise because we will learn a little bit of like advanced um, data structures, and we will also learn a technique which is how to make cyclic, how to make constant update cycles, how to make time iterations over Grasshopper, which is something that is not really how Grasshopper is designed to work with, but it's very easy to simulate and mimic. So I think it's an interesting exercise. It's a little advanced, perhaps. Um, so this might be the most advanced um, live stream that I might have done so far. Um, but I think it's a really interesting and the result is going to be really, really cool. 
Um, I have to full disclaimer, I have not prepared this, so it might be a little choppy, but you guys know me. So um, I would maybe like, oh, well, how are we doing this? And then I just I will just go and record the section and then go back, etc, etc. So, um, so this is what we're doing today. Do you have any feedback, any ideas? Um, I will probably start by doing this just on a simple grid of points, but then I will explain how this can be extended to, for example, um, taking a surface and like chopping it in like a grid of cells and uh, applying this logic on top of a full surface, how this could be extended to, instead of two-dimensional rectangular grids, it could be extended to hexagonal grids, triangular grids, uh, Voronoi grids, uh, three-dimensional grids, so like a voxel uh, field, you know. Um, we can take we can take a look at those at all of those turns. Um, so um, before that, I'm gonna go over the chat a little bit. I see my brother Fernando. How are you doing, Kristen? Good to see you. I see a lot of familiar names: Rafael, uh, Pixel Cards, Aid, Bakaris. I've seen you guys in many um, in many in the previous uh, in the previous. Uh, live streams. I'm very happy to see you again. Uh, CG Kid, Chandra, how are you doing? Um, I'm going to scroll a little bit. Uh, Rafael is asking, like, wait, Conway died? Yes, he passed away last weekend of coronavirus. Um, so, yeah, it's a very unfortunate. Um, people are excited about this exercise. Um, and actually, I had an idea as well. Uh, remember how we were talking about modeling buildings and become those videos becoming a series like algorithmic modeling challenges, whatever. I have, um, wait, let me pick that up. I, I have it somewhere here. I'll be just right back. <clears throat> I am a huge fan of, um, I don't know if you guys know this, it's a series of books that was published in the 80s, I believe. Uh, they're called Graphic Gems. Uh, it's a series of five books. And it's back in the times when um, computer graphics were still very much in development. And it's a wonderful book. It's got like all these very small chapters about how to do this one particular graphics operation in a computer, uh, optimized and fast and with code examples. Uh, so I have like the five volumes and they're really cool. You can find them for very cheap in, um, in on Amazon as used books. And they come with like cool perks, like for example, this like ruler. <laughs> It comes with like a, like, a, like a ruler or it comes with like floppy disks with C++ code. Um, so, and, and they're called graphic gems because basically there are collections of like tiny exercises to just do one graphics operation very good and very fast. So I thought that perhaps like starting a series where um, I also shoot videos on, we could, we could call them geometry gems or computational design gems or something a bit catchy uh, but what I basically break down one algorithm to create some to perform some kind of geometrical operation I'm thinking this could be a good example um, I'm thinking um, like I don't know for example polyline simplification algorithms like the Douglas Pecker algorithm or like um, spatial packing like where and failure uh, algorithm you know those kind of things like very concise about a geometrical operation, com conversions between uh, quaternions and planes and that kind of stuff, you know? So that could be a good series to do. And it could be learning about concepts and maybe even the C-sharp components that we do doing that, we could, somebody could help and like turn them into a huge plugin that just keeps getting more and more components, the more uh, of these uh, gems that we do, you know? So that could be cool. Um, what do you guys think about that? <sighs> Share some book titles on computational design, maybe in the beginning of every life. Actually, that's not idea. That's not a bad idea because I have a lot of those. <laughs> I love, I like collecting old, I like collecting old books of, especially of architecture, of geometry and from early computer science. Uh, and I have a lot of those. Unfortunately, most of them are in my office at Harvard and I don't have access to them right now. I only have a few of these, so maybe we will have to wait 
uh, until that. But I could do just a piece where like I just go over like a ton of books and I talk about them and I give you recommendations. Um, I don't know. All right. So should we get going with this? Um, I've been talking for 20 minutes. You guys got to tell me if like these introductions and me ranting out about stuff, <laughs> if it's too much. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I just, this is kind of my social time of the week, you know, <laughs> in a weird way, because I'm, I'm locked in my apartment like everybody else, right? So um, it could be interesting. Um, Chinma is asking if I could take up something like generative growth design. Yeah, we could do like uh, tree system, branching system, L tree systems. We could uh, do like a gem on fractals, uh, which is a really interesting exercise on recursion, you know, so that could be that could be very easy to do. Um, yes, this can be the second video of a challenge series. No, it's a cool way to start. All right, agreed. Um, okay. So, yeah, so let me sip a little bit. And it's probably time to start. Okay. So, how are we going to do this? Um, I think the video that I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do like last week where I introduced the video at the very end. Uh, once everything is done and I can show it working. So please remind me again if I forget to record the introduction of the video at the very end of this live stream. Okay. But I think what I would like to do is I would like to first um, introduce what we're going to do. So like maybe I want to do some sketches. Maybe I want to like break down the rules of how the game of life works and how cells become alive, how they stay alive or how they die uh, in an evolutionary way. And then I think I'm going to break down the exercise in two parts. Um, because um, if we, I want to, I want to, I want, I want to do, I'm going to implement I'm going to implement it first in a simplified way um, to avoid having to deal with complex data structures right off the bat and so that we can concentrate on the actual algorithm. Okay. And then on the second part, I'm going to go back over the same component and I'm going to, instead of working with a simplified data structure, I think I'm going to use, I'm going to work directly with a data tree so that we can use that as an excuse to learn about data trees in C sharp scripting components. Okay. Uh, it's also a much cleaner way of working because if we feed in a data tree of, 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 of elements, we want a data tree out of it probably, right? It's a much better practice. So I think I'm going to keep it at those two levels. And then by the end, um, I may give myself some time to play around with the result and like, hook it up to like a surface or like a different kind of grid. I don't know, um, to make it look a bit fancier. Uh, I didn't like when we did the, the Berlin Holocaust Memorial and it ended up like this like pink blob of blocks. I, I think I want to spend some time like making it look a bit nicer. Um, yeah. And then as usual, by the end of the live stream, I will spend some time doing Q&A and chatting with you guys um, and answering, answering questions, talking about what we could do for next week. Okay. So if you have ideas about what to do next week, I'm happy to, um, I'm happy to, um, I'm happy to listen. Okay. Okay. So should I pull up? Um, yeah, let me pull up. <clears throat> um, John Conway's <sighs> game of life simulator online. Uh, let me pull up the, the thing that I was, yeah, this one here. Whoa, this is, what is this? <laughs> you see, you can do really cool things with the game of life. Look at this like monster, monstrous critter. This is scary. <laughs> it's called the gray ship. Uh, yeah, so if you go online, actually, there's like tons and tons of websites that break you down, like interesting patterns that are like self perpetuating. Um, because of the rules of the game, uh, <laughs> somebody's saying this is the, this is the coronavirus. Exactly. <laughs> uh, okay. So let me stop. Um, 
randomize this so that we get a nice uh, example. And then perhaps I want to start here. Perhaps this is what I want to uh, start by talking about, by showing what we're going to do, and then moving on to my sketching board and breaking down the rules. Um, this would come after the introduction. What I will have shown, well, if I have shown it working, then um, then maybe I should start like, okay, the game of life is so and so. Um, yeah, okay, I'll, let, I'll, I'll start like that. Hi, Barbara, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh, Galiaf, we were just talking about you uh, like 10 minutes ago. I don't know if you picked it up, but thank you very much for for the Python version of the memorial. Uh, yep. Grapes of Math by Alex Bellows has good info on Game of Life. Um, okay, I don't know what that reference is, but it's you guys are welcome to check it out. I'll definitely check it out myself. All right, I think it's time to start. So let's get going. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, uh, I'm going to keep doing these long silent pauses uh, before I switch between recording and talking mode because they're really helpful for us uh, when we edit the videos. So. Uh, expect a lot of those. All right. <clears throat> How are we starting? Yes, I'm going to explain what we're doing and I'm going to show this thing running. Okay. So what is Game of Life? Um, as I said before, Game of Life is this form of cellular automata that uh, Professor John Conway came up with, um, which has been very popular in recreational mathematics and in like uh, sort of like basic life-like evolutionary simulations, etc. In which basically um, the idea is that there's a basic structure of two-dimensional grid of cells. Uh, some of them, and they can only be alive or they can only be dead. And then there are some rules about how each step of the simulation how those cells evolve and how some of them live and some of those die. The nice thing about Game of Life is that um, the rules are tweaked in a way that uh, it gives you a very strong impression of this kind of like like lifelike elements like populating and replicating uh, and uh, and dying over time, you know. So for example, I'm using this online Game of Life simulator at copy.sh which I initialize with a random sample. So this look, basically looks like noise. But if I run it, you will see that as soon as the game of life rules start kicking in, we start getting this like appreciation of like these like elements that are alive and are moving around and are reproducing and are dying over time, etc. So it's a really interesting and really playful um, uh, thing to thing to to see and to work with. Um, so this is where we're going to try to mimic something like this today. Um, and before we go into actually making any code, I want to do what is best before designing any kind of algorithm, which is talking about breaking down the rules of how this actually works at a low level. Okay, so for that, I'm going to use some diagrams. So let's, um, let's switch to the whiteboard. Okay, whiteboard time. Uh, so I'm going to switch to whiteboard. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to, so that, um, for, so that people don't have to, um, to sit down while I do this, I'm just going to draw a grid, um, real quick here. And uh, it's really difficult to draw things here in this vertical screen. Yeah. All right. And then this, 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 this. Okay, this looks terrible. <laughs> I don't even know how you guys put up with me. <laughs> I need to I need to figure out a better way to do this, but um, <laughs> for the time being, since I don't have a real whiteboard, okay. Um, 
<clears throat> okay, so let's get to recording. Let's go back to recording mode. <clears throat> Good. Um, so we are back on whiteboard mode and I'm, I drew this two-dimensional grid of cells, all right? And as I was saying before, the game of life is based on the idea that each cell can only have two states. It can only be alive or it can only be dead. And it also is based on the idea that we start from an initial condition. So if we start from all dead, all cells being dead, very likely nothing is going to populate, all right? Uh, unless we tweak the rules, but I'll get to that at the very end of the, of, the, of the stream. But let's start with an initial situation, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to randomly or purposefully, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to say, for example, this cell is going to start a life. This cell is also going to start a life. This cell is also going to start a life. And this one and this one, for example, okay? Those are the five cells that are our initial condition and then start as a life, okay? Um, and I've done a trick here. Um, I've actually drawn a glider. I think this is called a glider, which is a really well-known form for the game of life, but which kind of like self-replicates and keeps and maintains itself. But you can, you can Google that uh, or you will see it working later on. But anyway, um, it's a good example to start. The idea is that think of this as iteration one. This is the first step of our simulation of life through the game of life, right? And now the rules of Conway's standard game of life, and this can be changed, but the standard rules is that um, there are three basic situations. Um, a, so if any cell is, uh, okay, let me, I blanked here. Um, what are the rules? How do I want to explain this? I want to explain this as, uh, I want to explain this as um, cells get born if there are three neighbors and cells uh, survive if there are two or three neighbors. Otherwise they die, okay? All right, so that's what I want to say. <clears throat> and what was I saying, actually? How, the, how did I finish when I blanked? Uh, okay. So the way to look at this is very simple. Um, cells can be alive or can be dead. And uh, the rules of how they evolve over time are very simple. Uh, so for example, if we have an empty cell, by default, all the cells that are dead stay dead unless there is a chance that they get born, right? That they go back alive. Uh, that was very complicated. No, no I, I want to say that in a different way. Let me drink some tea. Um, okay, again. The way the rules work about how cells uh, evolve over time is very simple. Uh, there are two situations that can happen. A cell can get born or a cell can survive. Otherwise, everything else is cells die, all right? And there are two very simple rules about that. Um, a cell that is alive will survive if and only if it has two neighbors or three neighbors um, that are alive. Again, this is for the John Conway's basic standard game of life. Um, and at the same time, the rules for how a cell gets born are that a cell will only become alive if and only if three neighbors around it are alive, okay? So let me show how that works here. Let's take, for example, I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna create a new color here and green is going to be the second iteration, okay? So we're going to look at this cell here, all right? The one that I have here. And for this cell, uh, we said, I'm gonna write, uh, sorry, I'm going to write down the rules. A cell is born if, three neighbors are alive, all right? And a cell survives if two or three neighbors are alive. Otherwise, all cells die, okay? So let me go back to that. Uh, this is called 
the B3 S2 3 rule, and those can be changed and can be customized. It just happens that it is well known that for this particular rule, all these like nice patterns, evolutionary patterns uh, arise. So for example, let's say that we have this cell here, this one that I'm going to color as green. This one was alive in the previous iteration, so it will remain alive this iteration because this, um, because this, um, can you see my screen? Because the one on the left is alive and because the one on the bottom is alive. So it has two neighbors that are alive, which means that it sticks to the two rule. Now, will this cell stay alive? It will stay alive because it has two neighbors that are alive. Will the one on the left stay alive? So this one, uh, I can't point it here. <laughs> so this one, where is the, my mouse? Where is my mouse? Oh, here. So will this one remain alive? It will not remain alive. So this one here. It will not remain alive because it only has one neighbor that is alive. So that one is going to die on the next, on the next one. What about this one here? Is this one staying alive or is dying? This one is staying alive because it has three neighbors that are alive. This one, this one, and this one. All right. And actually, before I made a mistake, this one stays alive because it has three neighbors. It has this one, this one, and this one. All right. Now, what about this one here? Does it stay alive? Does that one dies because it only has one neighbor next to it. Okay. And what about the ones that get born? The ones that get born are going to be the ones that have three neighbors that are alive. So if that one is going to be this one here, because it has this one, this one, and this one, right? It's going to be, um, which, which one else is going to be? Uh, it's going to be this one, because it has this and this and this, right? Um, and which one is which one is it going to be? Um, uh, so this one, you see this one here, that one has five neighbors, so it's too much, it's suffocated, so it doesn't stay alive, okay? Um, I might be getting this wrong, but you guys know, you guys get the message, okay? Um, so I think this, as far as I can tell, this will be the next iteration, um, because this one, for example, only has one neighbor, this one only has one neighbor, one neighbor. This one has two neighbors, so it doesn't get alive. Two neighbors, no. Two neighbors, no. Two neighbors, this is only the one. Okay, so this is, this would be the next iteration. So if I now hide this layer, this would be iteration two of the game of life. Now let's take a look at iteration three. Now if I change colors and I create a new layer, you can see that, for example, um, this cell is going to die because it, no, this one, no, this one is going to stay alive because it has two neighbors, this one and this one. Um, this one here, what is going to happen to this one? It has four neighbors, so this one is going to die. This one has one neighbor that's going to die. This one has two neighbors, that one is going to remain alive. And this one has three neighbors. So it's going to remain alive. And what about the ones that are going to get born? This one is going to get born because it has these three neighbors alive from the previous iteration. This one is going to get, oh no, not that one, sorry. Um, which one? This one is going to get alive because it has these three neighbors. Um, and what else? I don't know if any other is going to go alive. But this would be the second, the third iteration of the game of life. Um, um, so, yeah, so let's, I'm probably, again, I'm probably not getting this right, but let's assume that that's the case, okay? So I'm going to remove this, sorry, I'm going to remove the previous iteration, and then for the last iteration, I could say, well, uh, for this one, now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I already have, Remember the glider that I told you about? This is the same shape. It just has been rotated and moved a little bit. So now we're basically starting again with a similar situation where for the next iteration, uh, this one is going to be born. 
this one is going to remain alive, this one is going to die, this one is going to remain alive, this one is going to remain alive, this one is going to die on the left, and there should be um, another one popping up, this one. This one is going to pop up because it has three neighbors, right? So, and as if you notice, uh, oh, I should have done, I should have done red. That would have been, uh, it's okay. Um, but um, you notice how now, yeah. So, and then our evolutionary game would be something like this. We start here, next iteration, next iteration, next iteration, etc., etc., etc. All right. So these are very, very simple rules. The idea of um, how cells survive depending on their neighbors and how cells get born depending on their neighbors is a very simple rule. But as it evolves over time, it creates this like emergence of complexity that is really interesting and really playful. Um, turns out that it's not very difficult to write this algorithm. So that's what we're going to do today. So let's get hands on. Okay, I think I did a little bit of a mess <laughs> with this, uh, but you guys get the message probably. Uh, if I ever get a legit whiteboard, um, uh, maybe I can, but actually the whole like layer thing kind of worked because I could like mm, simulate the, 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 this thing so that that was not a bad thing. Let me, let me save this diagram just in case um, somewhere for the future. Um, all right, pixel art. How does it decide neighbors? Ooh, that's a good example. That's a good idea. That's a good thing. Um, I'm not sure if I covered that correctly, but uh, each cell, the neighbors are the eight cells that are surrounding it. Every frame, every iteration of the game. Why is it called the game of life? Because it generates this like. Um, series of states of things being on and off that when you look at them evolving over the time it does kind of give you the impression of like some kind of like petri dish with like bacteria and elements that are reproducing between each other and like uh, getting alive and dying um, it's um that's kind of um why it was called like that Good. So what are we doing next? Um, we're going to switch back to, to Rhino. And um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a grid of points. And we're going to, um, we're going to somehow figure out which ones are alive and which ones are dead. And then we're going to use those to feed a C plus a C sharp component in which we will simulate, um, we will implement these rules that I just described. Okay. Uh, remember, um, I'm going to do this in two parts, in two steps. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be two different videos. I think it's just going to be the same video. Um, but I'm going to do like I'm, all, I'm going to simplify the data a little bit before working with it, and then I'm going to work with the non-simplified data because uh, we're pros, and I want I want to help you guys become pros. So we're going to do it the right, clean, nice way. Okay. Good. Um, let's let's get this going. So. Yeah, so grid of points. Great. In order to implement these rules and this algorithm in, um, in some kind of simulation, we're going to use uh, Rhino and Grasshopper. And we're going to implement this by writing a custom C sharp script component where we're going to implement all these rules. So the first thing that I want to do in order to get there is I want to create something that looks like a like a grid of cells. And I want to create an initial state where some of those cells are alive and some of those are dead. So uh, for that, I'm just going to use plain vanilla grasshopper, I'm going to create a rectangular grid of points. And I'm going to use some logic to figure out which ones I'm going to consider alive and which ones I'm going to consider dead, which I'm probably just going to draw like some curve on Rhino and use like curve containment and um, and something simple, something simple, like something fast. So okay, let's do that real quick. So um, I'm going to use bifocals so that I am sure that everybody can see 
icons, but they can also see um, the, the groups and the tooltips on top of the names of the components. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a grid, a rectangular. I I'm going to, it's going to be a square grid of points uh, because I don't want distances to be. And uh, that's going to be the base plane. The size of the grid is going to be one. It doesn't matter. And for example, for this, I'm going to, um, for how many elements in each direction there are, I'm going to keep these two separate ones just because I, I want to be able to, do, to, to debug. Um, so let's say I'm going to do 50 by 30, for example. Okay, so I got a grid of cells. Um, for example, 50 by 30 or 40 or something. Um, I have a grid of cells. Um, I have the actual cells, but I also have points. So <clears throat> I have the points here, for example. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw like a curve here, like a small one. I'm going to bring this in here. All right. And then I'm going to use curve containment to figure out which of these points are inside the curve and which ones are not. Uh, and those are going to be the ones that are going to start, um, as a life. I could also implement some kind of randomness, but um, I think this is just an easy way to start. So for example, is are these points inside of this curve? I'm going to get results from zero. Let's let's plug in a panel here. Uh, so the results are zeros, ones or twos. And if you remember, um, zero meant outside, one was coincident and two was inside. So I'm going to check if uh, if these values are equal to the number two, because what I want is I want to end up with a list that tells me whether if elements are inside or outside. So false, 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 false. And then I, you see, I hear some truths here. Those are the ones that are going to be um, that are going to be uh, inside of the curve. And I could just for visual purposes, I could just curl call these points here by the pattern. All right, so that I can see that correctly, this is indeed uh, the, the first point uh, that I'm going to start with. Okay. Um, so this is important because what I want to feed my component is not going to be uh, it's not going to be the list of points It's going to be the list of trues and falses so that I can play with those as the states of my cells. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so now that we have a basic scaffolding about for, for this, I'm going to, I'm going to start writing a, the, we're going to start writing the C sharp component. Okay. Okay, so we have this, let me rearrange this a little bit. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, maybe we want to start simple. Uh, it's fine. I'm not going to change that right now. So um, what are we going to do now? Um, the C sharp, um, the C sharp component, we're going to take in the list of trues and falses. Um, and we're going to take in the size. And then we're going to create a data structure with with all these elements. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Let's get to it. Um, a C sharp component where I'm going to take um, the cells and I'm going to take them as uh, I'm, I'm going to take them as a list. Uh, and here I'm going to tell um, how many cells are in the x direction? No, uh, how many rows are in the are in and how many columns? Uh, because I want to know the size of the grid. Um, and um, because something and this is important because let me explain this first. Um, what's coming out of here, when I created my grid of points, you can see that what I'm getting is a tree that has 51 branches, and each one of those branches has 41 elements. Okay, so it's important that um, we could work with this data tree of elements. 
Um, but I want to simplify this first and flatten those as a just like one single one single instead of this data tree structure, I just want one single list with all the elements one after the other, because that's going to be, make my life a little easier inside of um, inside of the, the C sharp component. Okay, uh, that's going to be part one, I'm going to do that simplification. And then in part two, I will work directly with the data tree structure. So the cells that I'm going to take are going to be this is going to be a list of trues, va Boolean values, trues and falses. And then rows is going to be an integer. So it's going to be an integer, because it's the number of rows that my grid has, and the columns is also going to be the number of rows that my tree that my that my grid has, I'm going to add um, a couple of other inputs, I'm going to say, should we run this simulation? And for this, I'm going to use a Boolean. And I'm also going to say, should we reset the situation, the simulation? Should we start from scratch? And for this is also going to be a Boolean. Okay. So with this, if I plug this in here, um, I think we are ready to go. Uh, I would need to plug the number of rows. And that's going to be that's going to be the number of elements in the x direction plus one. And that's also going to be for the columns is going to be also the number of elements plus one. So um, this is the number of rows. So and this one is the number of columns, if I am correct, right? Um, yeah, 41, 51. And if I look at the data, you see that I have 51 branches with 41 elements. So we're good. 41 is going to be the rows. Um, and, uh, and the other one, uh, actually, it's the other way around. Uh, yes, so I'm just going to do the other way. Yes, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm going to keep it that way. Maybe I change it in in, 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 a, in a second. Okay. Um, all right. Now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna change it. So rows are going to be now I'm going to keep it. <laughs> uh, columns are going to be branches, and rows are going to be elements within each one of the each one of the branches. Okay. And then here, I'm just going to plug in some toggles. So Boolean toggle for running and Boolean toggle for resetting. And with this, I think we should be good to start writing the component. Okay, let's get to it. Let me save this as usual. Um, I'm just going to save it somewhere here. Um, uh, game of life one. Um, and this is going to be game of life one, oh. game of life one, okay. And let's get to it. <clears throat> okay, let's get to it. I'm going to go into my C sharp script component, and I'm going to open my script. And then here, you can see that I have a list of objects called cells, I'm actually going to re I have to take a look at this because I need them to be Boolean values. So I'm going to right click here, uh, type hint, this have to be Boolean values. All right, I'm going to double click, and I'm going to see that I have a list of cells. Okay, and then how many rows I have, how many columns I have, and whether if I should be running or resetting. Okay, so I'm going to start very simple, just with some sanity. So let's make sure that if we are running, um, we should be so if run is not true. So if run equals equals false, then just don't do anything return. Okay. Now, the next thing that I would like to do is I will work with the reset later. But the first thing that we need to do is we take we need to take the cells that are coming as a single list. And we need to create a two dimensional array to take a look at um, to, to make our life easier when we are checking for neighbors. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a simple algorithm 
to take a list that is like all the elements one after the other and to turn that into a two dimensional array. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to create a two dimensional array of Boolean values. Okay, and this I'm going to call this um, new cells, the new state of the cells. Okay, and this is going to be equal to a new Boolean array of uh, what am I doing? A new Boolean array of how many columns are in the and how many rows. Okay, uh, I'm going to see Okay, we already have. <laughs> okay, invalid rank specifier, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I think this is probably because I'm not defining the, um, I'm not defining the, the double. Well, this is also, there's also a type of here, because I'm probably not defining correctly uh, my two dimensional array. So let me take a look at that because I haven't done two dimensional arrays in a while. Uh, so Okay, C sharp two dimensional arrays. How do you do multi dimensional arrays, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so all right. So yeah, so I was doing it the JavaScript way, I think. Um, so I guess we're going to do it this way. Yeah, so instead of having two square brackets as the multi dimension, I think this is, comes from Java, actually. I think the way that is done in C sharp is by specifying this comma between and then specifying the two dimensions inside of the inside of the of the bracket. Okay, declaration. So let me do that. I think the error that we're hitting here is that instead of that I wrote two empty declarations for the array, and I believe that in C sharp you actually do double two dimensional arrays by specifying that there has to be a dimension separator within the array, something like this. Okay, so if we do this, we can see that the array now has two dimensions, how many columns and how many rows. Okay, so I'm going to add a comment here, turn the list into a 2D array. All right, good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I'm going to take all these elements, and I'm going to Put them inside of the inside of the inside of the um, the double side the double array. So how is that going to work? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a double for loop, where I'm going to say j is going to be equal to the number of columns, and then inside of this four is going to be y i is going to be equal to the number of rows i plus plus. All right, and here. I'm going to be going over each one of these elements and adding it to the array. However, I know that i and j are going to be iterators for rows and columns. So, um, so, but I need to know from this how many, uh, which is the element that I need to take from the long list of cells. So there are two ways I can do that. Um, I can either use i and j and work with those numbers to figure out which one of the elements is on the list, or just keep an, an external iterator, um, for example, it that is going to start at zero. And every time we pick one element, um, we use this L number and we update it by one. Okay. Um, also, some sanity that we should do is if the number of cells is different than rows times columns, then we should give some error to the to the user like component dot add runtime warning, grasshopper run time message level. Uh, the, the error, like something weird with dimensions of the grid. Okay, and return. Okay, so we got this, this is working. Uh, I have a typo somewhere. Uh, in line 70 columns. Okay. All right. So, and this is the value iterator is assigned but never used. Okay, so let's keep let's keep going. So and 
let's see if this works because like now if I were to plug for example this directly it would have to give me the error uh, oh it doesn't give me the error that is very strange um, okay so maybe or maybe because the, of this thing it's not properly working okay uh, so maybe how is this not how is this not changing anything okay that is very strange let me pause here and figure this out because this is uh, kind of strange so if the number of rows and the number of is not the same as how many elements this should be giving me a is this executing properly and of script oh because i'm not running uh, okay yes <laughs> all right okay and now if i plug this here okay yes so now we get the error then something weird with the dimensions okay run toggle is set to false yes you're right thank you <laughs> all right yeah these things are this a lot of this is going to happen very often okay let me get back to that The problem was that uh, my toggle for running was off, so that's why there was no calculation being performed. But as I do this now, you can see that we get the error. Something weird with the dimensions of the grid. Yes. So we are good to go now. Okay, let's keep going. So we have an iterator here. And something that we can do is we can say, well, for every, what we're going to do is um, we're going to say, um, we're going to say, uh, the new cells uh, with big N, since we're doing columns here, this should be J. And since we're doing rows uh, on the second dimension, this should be I. This element is going to be whatever, whichever one we found on the cells list. So cells, um, it, uh, because we start with zero and then uh, for every iteration of the for loop, we update this count by one so that um, so that we're going sequentially by each one of the elements on the int list. All right. Let me run this and let me just uh, output the value of um, of the new cells, just in case to take a look at what it looks like outside of outside of Grasshopper. So if I do that, uh, and if I output this, you can see that I have this structure where it's uh, all the elements one after the other and you can see that um, you can see that um, grasshopper doesn't take two-dimensional arrays it doesn't really turn them into a data tree structure automatically we will have to do that our, ourselves but that's what i was talk talking about before that takes a bit more time so i want to get the actual algorithm running first and then we can um, we can take a look at like better ways of working with um, with um, with the data structure. Okay. Okay. So here, new cells. I'm I don't like this name. Um, I'm going to say cell array. I'm going to call this the cell array. Um, and the next thing that we want to do is we want to now write something that takes um, this array of cells. In, with rows and columns in with the values of true and false and then we start iterating and taking a look at um, how we can generate the next iteration of these cells by applying uh, Conway's game of life rules okay so let's take a look at that okay um, how are we doing this we are going to do it oh new cells let me let me rewrite that uh, here down here okay so how are we going to do that well first I would like to how are we going to do that um, 
we're going to go over, we're going to create a new array with the same dimensions. And then with a for loop, with a double nested for loop, we're going to go over each element. We're going to check how many neighbors are alive. We're going to calculate that. And then once we know that number, we're going to check it against uh, the born and um, survival rates. So for those, I actually need the born and survival rates as input components. So I need to add that. Um, and I think I'm going to write the code a bit lengthy, just so that it's easier to understand uh, if we are learning about this. Um, if some of you are like hardcore computer scientists, you're going to be like, oh, that is so not optimized. You could just write like this three liner and have it. But that's not the point. I think this should be more educational. So I'm going to perhaps like write too much code that is redundant, but it will be easier to read and hopefully easier to understand as well. So I'm going to choose to do that. Um, um, OK. So I ended up saying, let's take a look at how that works. Um, OK. Before we go into writing any code, there is something that uh, we need to add to the, um, to the component as an input. And if you remember, when I was talking about how the um, Game of Life rules work, I, I wrote here this section where I broke down that uh, for a cell to go from death to alive, uh, it needs to have three neighbors. And for a cell that's alive, to stay alive, it needs to have either two or three neighbors. Um, those are the numerical rules of the standard game of life designed by Conway. But those numbers could change. You can come up with your own numbers. It just so happens that this particular combination is known to give very nice visual results, but you could choose another one. And that's because we're writing the algorithm. We want the parametric power to like choose those rules, right? So I would not want to hard code these numbers. I would like to have them as inputs to my component so that in the future, you guys can play with different combinations of the rules. You can go online and look at there's like tons of people um, proposing their own combinations of rules and how that works. So you may want to tinker with that. So for that reason, we're going to input these values, the rules of the evolution of the cellular automata as numbers, as inputs of the component. So let's do that. I'm going to go back to um, my script. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a couple more inputs. So I'm going to call this uh, born birth rate, birth rules, rule, for example. And I'm going to call this uh, survival rule. OK. And um, these are going to be, both are going to be integers. They're going to be the number of L, the number of neighbors that they need. But, and remember, something that I'm going to do, uh, instead of keeping those as single items, I'm going to make them lists because you may want to add two or three numbers to the survival rate, or you may want to add more numbers to the birth rate, right? So that's why, um, that's why I, want to, I want to go back here and say that the birth rule, rule must be a list access and that survival rule must also have a list access. OK? Um, 120, I don't know what's going on here. OK, uh, let me take a look at what is going on here. Uh, why is this? Why is this going red? OK, yes. So we're trying to output, um, we're trying to output um, we're trying to output um, a f an array. Uh, OK. Oh, huh? all right, that worked. Um, OK. Let's get to it. And now that we have our birth rule and our survival rules as lists, I'm just going to input here, for example, I'm just going to input here the number two as the birth rule. I'm going to do like multi line so that it, I may want to add more elements later. And I'm going to copy paste this. And I'm going to say the survival rate is going to be two and three. And that's going to be also a list of elements. Okay. All right. 
So let's get back into the component and start writing those rules. So here, what I want to do is like I want to create a new array where I'm going to define which ones are the new, which one is the new true and false pattern for being alive or being dead. So new array of uh, alive dead cells for next iteration. Okay. So here I'm going to say, for example, uh, I'm going to copy this boolean uh, new cells is going to be columns and it's going to be row It's going to have the same dimensions. And then this I'm going to, I'm going to change it a little bit. Okay. Now, now that I have my double for loop, what I need to do is inside of each one of these for loops, um, I need to calculate uh, for this one cell that I'm in. So for example, bool uh, uh, current state is state is going to be equal to uh, cell array. So where we were before, and then this is going to be J and this is going to be I because J is for columns and rows is for um, and I is for rows. So this value tells me where I'm going to call this previous state actually. Okay. I'm going to call this previous state. Um, the next thing that I want to do is um, I want to calculate how many neighbors uh, are alive. Okay. So for example, I can start a variable here called alive neighbors. And I'm going to initialize this to zero. Okay, because I don't know how many I have. Um, I'm going to add here compute alive neighbors, for example, I start this with zero. And then I think this is where it's going to get a little lengthy, I'm going to write a lot of code that could probably be optimized. Uh, but I just want to make sure that we understand what we're doing. Okay. So let me go back to the whiteboard and diagram this this situation. Okay. Yes, let's do that. Um, um, what am I going to do? Let me get this ready before. Uh, let me get this ready before we do anything. So I had this situation, mm, I'm going to turn off these layers. And, um, and then I want to say that columns and rows, I'm going to do it to this diagram here. Okay. <clears throat> Let's analyze what we're doing numerically on this two dimensional grid with a diagram. Okay. So let's imagine we are on this cell here. Uh, I cannot draw. Let's imagine we are on this cell here. Okay. And as we said before, we have a convention where we're saying this, uh, these are the number of columns. And this direction is the number of rows. Okay, uh, columns, we're representing it with letter J and columns, we're representing it with the letter I. Um, you can see that this cell right now is 0 1 2 3 4 5 is J equals 5. And 0 1. This is um, this cell is row one. So this cell is going to be 5. Okay, that's I and J. Now what we need to do is if this cell is currently on J comma I position, what we need to do is we need to check the eight neighbors that are around. So for example, the top left, the top, the top right, the left, the right, the bottom left, the bottom and the bottom right, we're going to check each one of them to see if they are alive. No, and we're going to keep counting. And the way we're going to do that is because we know that each cell has a coordinate of J and Y in the two dimensional array. We also know that the top left one is going to have so for example, this one is going to be J minus one, I plus one, right? This element here, this neighbor here would be for example, the same, the same J that the cell has, but I minus one, you know, so we're going to do a lot of that. But also at the same time, 
Um, we need to figure out special situations as, for example, imagine that the cell is here at the boundary and there are no top neighbors. So we need to address that situation as well. The way we would do that is by, we could assume that if there are no neighbors, then they're all dead. We could simulate that. Or we could say, we could implement like a wrapping condition where we say, well, if there are no top neighbors, let's assume that these guys here are going to be the top neighbors. Um, so that uh, whatever happens, keep happen is happening, like keeps wrapping up from one dimension to the other. I think that is, um, I think that is a really cool, I think we're probably going to do the wrapping part because it's just cooler and it will make the simulation keep alive uh, for longer, I think. So let's go back to, let's go back to code. All right, was this clear? <laughs> All right, um, I've been, I've drunk a lot of coffee and a lot of tea today, so I'm going to take a bathroom break. Um, I'll be back in two minutes, okay? So stay with me, I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Ah. Okay. How is this going so far? Are you liking it? Is it too much? I told you that this was gonna be perhaps a little more advanced or at least a little more arid. It's gonna take us some time to get to the simulation. Um, so just bear with me. Um, we're, we're not very far from like visual results, okay? Okay. So let's now figure out how many neighbors we have. Hey, Zach, I didn't know you were here. How are you doing? <laughs> okay. Cool. Let's figure out how many neighbors do we have uh, here. So as I said, we need to first for each one of the neighbors, we need to figure out which one is the, the row in which they are and the column in which they are. So for that, I'm going to create these two variables. I'm going to create a variable called ni, so new i, and so neighbor i and neighbor j. Um, and, um, and I'm going to use those to like figure out for each one of the eight neighbors, which one of their n number along the count and the column they should be, all right? So how is that going to work? Let's start, for example, with the top left. The top left element is going to be, uh, for NY is going to be, as we, sa as we said in the diagram, uh, top left is going to be, um, in terms of I, is going to be one unit less, yet one unit more. So that's going to be whatever we are, which is I, plus one, okay? And then NJ is going to be the opposite whatever we are in J minus one. And now here, what we need to do is we need to check if, as I, as I, as I discussed before, we need to check if that neighbor might be 
outside of the range of the array. Uh, so the way I'm going to do that is by, by saying, and if it is outside of the array, then we need to wrap. We need to go to the other side, okay? So for example, if here, if for this element, uh, it turns out that the new i is greater than the dimension of the array, we will make i equal to zero so that we wrap down here, okay? So let's do that. Um, so I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to compute if n i is greater than uh, uh, rows minus one, then n i should be equal to zero. Otherwise, if n i is less than zero, then n i should be I'm going to write else if, and if n y is less than zero, then n r y should be equal to rows minus one. Okay, so that is the last element on the row. Similarly, if n j is greater than columns, columns minus one, uh, n j equals zero. Uh, otherwise, else if, and j is less than zero, then nj should be equal to columns minus one, okay? As we do this, um, now we can check. Now that we know exactly what is the position of uh, ni and nj, so what is the position of the neighbor, then what we can do is we can say uh, if that neighbor is alive, then we should add one more to the count of how many neighbors are alive, which is alive neighbors here. So I'm going to say here, if um, cell array, okay? So if cell array, that is where we were before, um, nj, ni equals equals true, if that was alive, then Alive neighbors should be incremented by one unit. Okay, let me run this. It looks like there's no um, there's no errors. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to work. <laughs> I just hope it does. Uh, but yes, so you see how we had to write seven lines of code just for this one neighbor. Um, I think this is a little simpler to read, but yes, we're going to have to do this for uh, the other seven neighbors, uh, which is going to take some time, but I just think it's a little easier to read and easier to understand. There are ways to make this a bit more optimal, to write a rule to go over the eight neighbors at once with four loops, but it's a bit more complicated and I don't want to get into that level of complexity yet, okay? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all this, um, all this, all these rules for the top, blah, blah, blah. So, and I'm going to do it like real quick. So if you know what you're doing, you're welcome to skip a little bit of this video. Otherwise just follow with me. I'm just gonna do it like real quick right now, okay? Okay, let's do that. Um, are we ready for this? Um, coding is print, okay. Let's get to it. So for the top, I'm just gonna copy and paste all of this. And remember, copy pasting is your enemy, is your neighbor. It's not, sorry, not your neighbor, your enemy. Uh, but for the top part, um, if you look, if we look at the diagram again, we see that if this is the one where we are, for the top one uh, here, uh, I needs to be incremented by one, but J should be the same. So if we go back here, um, we are, where is my where is my mouse? I plus one is good, uh, and J should be the same, and everything else is just the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna copy top, and I'm going to do top right. And if you can see from this rule, you can see that now I is still I plus one, uh, but J should also be J J plus one because we're moving in this direction. Okay, so J plus one for the top right. Now, uh, if I copy this and I stick it uh, to left, we can, we can see from the diagram that on the left, um, J here will be J 
will be minus one, but I, the rows, stay the same. So I stays the same and J is J minus one. Now I'm going to do right and the right is going to be the exact opposite. So I'm going to do I stays the same, J becomes J plus one. Now bottom, bottom left. What is bottom left going to look like? Bottom, bottom left is going to say i is going to be negative in this case is one less. Oh, I'm not I'm not on the right screen here. So bottom left is i minus one and then j minus one as well. So now we can do bottom and for bottom you can see that j is going to be the same because we are on the same column but um, i still remains minus one. So we're going to do that i minus one and j equals zero equals the same. And then bottom left bottom right is going to be j plus one and i minus one. Okay. And um, this was a lot. So let me just print here. Uh, uh, a life neighbors is going to be equal to this thing we just calculate to, to get a sense of whether if we are if this might make sense or if we are tremendously wrong. Okay, so here, uh, we're going to print this to the console. And as we do, we can see that, um, for example, we have let's match this to let's match this to uh, these two lists here. So let's see, let's make this list here. Uh, and let's look for the ones that are around 1000 something something and see how many neighbors they have. 1028. Ooh, we may not be we might be onto something here. Because as you can see, uh, the from 26 to 33, 26 to 33, all this cluster of uh, cells, they do have some variable number two, three, six, seven, seven, eight, you know, um, so, so it, it and the rest which are false, 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 are probably probably don't have anything around them. So maybe this is working. Uh, I'm so excited about this. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm so excited about this. So I can't wait to to now figure out. Uh, all right, so let's now implement a rule where we decide based on the number of neighbors, whether if the cell should remain, should give birth, should remain alive, or if it should be dead. Okay, let's get to it. All right, let's go. Let's go back to the C sharp component. And then here all the way at the end, once we have computed all the neighbors, I'm just going to move this line of code at the very end. Um, and say, well, um, here, let's say I'm going to compute the new state. Okay, so previous state was cell array, blah, blah, blah. Okay, now we need to compute the new state. New state and we're going to start, we're going to initialize it by to false, for example. And then we're going to do, we're going to write two conditionals. If the previous state was death, then we only have to check if the cell will survive. And if the previous state is alive, then we have to check if it remains alive, or if it dies otherwise. Okay. So what that means is that I'm going to say, if previous state was false, which means the, the the cell was dead, then let me check if given the number of current neighbors, if it should become alive, right? So what I'm going to do is how many what are where how do I know? What is the birth rule? The birth rule is like all the integers that are here in my birth rule list. So what I can say is, I can go over each one of the values that I'm plugging in here on the birth rule. And I go over all of them. And if any of them matches how many neighbors this cell has, then this I should change new state 
to becoming true. All right, so I'm going to say for each integer, um, integer b in birth rule, all right? And I'm going to say if b equals equals to how many alive neighbors are there, then I should change new state and make it true. All right, that's a very simple rule. Uh, this is going to be if um, cell was dead. All right, otherwise, if the cell was alive, so if cell was alive, then what we need to do is we need to check uh, for survival, all right? So what that means is that we need to check if the dead, if the, um, if the previous state was true, we need to check how many neighbors are, and if any of any of the number of neighbors matches any of the survival rule numbers here, so two or three, then um, new state should be true. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to do that again for each integer s in survival in survival rule for each integer in this list. If that integer equals equals how many? How many neighbors do we have right now? Uh, then new state should remain should be changed to true. You can see that by default, the new state is going to be false. We only need to check if we need to change that to become in true. All right. Um, and one thing that I would like to add, this is we don't really need this. This is just like a tiny bit of optimization. Uh, but something that we can say is here, we can add a break statement, which means that if we found that we had one match with each one of these, we don't need to keep checking the rest of the list because checking the rest of the list is redundant because we already found one match. So by adding here a break statement, what we do is we stop the for each loop from continuing and we move on to whatever comes next. All right. So same goes here. This would be very good if we had like a long list of checks, but otherwise it's just good practice, at least to know it. Okay, good. Uh, so what that means is that now that we know the new state of where of what we want, we can go back to new cells and we can store this new situation. We can store it exactly where it should go in the rows and the columns. So let me do that. So um, store new <coughs> state in new array. All right, so I'm going to do that by going to new cells and J comma Y because it's column and row order. And here we're going to, we're going to write new state, semicolon. Okay. I'm going to run this code. I don't get any errors. Are you guys ready for this? Are you guys ready for this? Let's try if we can get one iteration going. So we're going to say instead of outputting the cell array, we're going to output the new cells array. So this new iteration that we just created. What did you see how this area here changed from true to false? Let me actually let me actually work with that a little bit. Previous state. So what we just got uh, now previous uh, and uh, new iteration iteration uh, new iteration. All right. And then in previous, I'm going to in previous, I'm going to uh, write cells array and in new iteration, I'm going to write new cells. Uh, what? Okay, so this is going to be what did I have here cell array? Okay, Cell array, you can see and let's compare things. So we have this here, I'm going to plug in the new iteration, uh, and the number of neighbors. And you can see that um, from this cluster that we have here, you can see that they were all contiguous. And now it kind of like only the ones that are on the on the tips of the row 
survive and all the ones in the center die, which is kind of how, um, how this works. So let's visualize that. So what I'm going to do is from the, I'm going to take all these points uh, here, the ones that are inside, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to flatten those points. All right. And then I'm going to use the new iteration uh, as a calling pattern to pattern these ones here. And I hope, whoop. All right. And does this make any sense? Let's compare this with what we had uh, uh, with the ones that were contained. So let me check that. So that was, um, that was here. And the pattern was this one. Was it this one? No. What was it? Uh, okay, so this, this. Uh, are there any points? 78 locally defined values. Why are these guys not rendering? Uh, uh, from integer to, oh no, because I need to call this guys here. All right. So does this make any sense? Let's take a look at that. Um, it looks like we had these guys. All right. This is what we had before. Uh, and this is what we have now. So what we had before was this. So this cell has three neighbors, it remains. Um, and uh, these two pop up here, this pop up here, this pop up here, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. This one should not be popping here because it only has one neighbor here. Uh, and this one doesn't have a neighbor. This one only has one neighbor, so it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And these ones here in the boundary, they should remain. Um, <clears throat> so I think we're probably doing something wrong here. Uh, so let me take a look at what's going on and then I'm, I will get back to you. Okay, there's something that we're not doing correctly here. And I'm uh, going to assume that it probably has something to do with um, it probably has something to do with um, with um, with um, the I plus J plus J minus etc etc. Uh, so let's double check that. <clears throat> uh, so top left is I plus J minus plus plus J I J minus one J plus one. J minus one, I minus one, J minus one, J and J plus one. Oh, wait, I copy pasted this twice here. What? Yes, this is, you see copy pasting is, is the devil. <laughs> so we have bottom left, bottom, bottom right, and then I copy pasted bottom left again twice. Uh, so let's see if that changes things. This sounds, this looks more like it. Yes. Oh, okay. And also I just put the wrong number here. So the original has the number three in here. So, okay. This looks much closer to what it should be. Uh, yeah, because like here, this is previous state and you can see how this has three neighbors, this has three neighbors, this has three neighbors, so they pop up. Um, and this has three neighbors, it grows. No, this, uh, this has, this one actually has four neighbors. And this one has four neighbors and this one has four neighbors. Mm -hmm. This one has three. Uh, and also they're not surviving correctly. Are they not? Three, this is good. This one, this one is popping up and this one only has two neighbors. Is this working well? Um, Randy. 
Hi, hi, Remy. How are you doing? Um, there's something odd here. I don't think this is working correctly. Let me check the other rule. So let me check um, if the cell was dead. This is the previous state, which we're taking from cell array. The new state is false. And if the previous state was false, so that if the cell was dead, only go look at birth rule. And if this number matches how many neighbors do we have right now, then the new state should be the, 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 the this becoming alive. And if the cell was alive for each one of the survival rules, if you have this many alive neighbors, then the new state should also be true. It should remain. Huh. Hmm. And then new cells becomes new state and new cells I'm doing correctly um, is like columns and rows and J is columns and I is rows. <sighs> hmm. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, am I looking at this correctly? Um, all right, let's, because uh, this, uh, so these are the old ones, and I have a new one here, a new one here with three neighbors, that's good. This one has three neighbors, this one has three neighbors, this one has three neighbors, that's correct. This one has three neighbors, all of these have three neighbors. This one is not popping up because it has four neighbors. So it's actually, wait, it's actually, it's actually correct, isn't it? And this one, I think it's the survival that is not correct. So this one has, so this one is a previous one, which happens to survive even though it has four neighbors. And this one survives even though it has four neighbors. And this one survives having three neighbors that is okay so it's survival so getting born is working well it's survival that it's weird because uh maybe write the number of neighbors on top of each point to see if it's counting correctly uh you know what that's actually a good idea. Let's try that out. Um, let's create here uh, an, an array called neighbor count. And it's going to be a new array of integers, columns and rows. And then for n, for n, for n count, we're here, we're going to say n count j i is going to be equal to alive neighbors. Um, and let's say that we're going to output that here as a as a as another parameter. So these are the numbers. Um, and we're going to use some text, right? So where is the where can we display text? Uh, where was that tag here, text tag, um, the list, location of the text tag. So that's going to be all the points that we have here. The tag is going to be Baba. Now I need a I need the flattened list here. Uh, okay. All right. So this is okay. So something is not well work, working well here because let me. This is what I had, right? These are the points 
that are inside of the curve. So this one has three neighbors. This one has, uh, let me crank up the size of this thing. Let me crank up the size of this thing. Um, optional color tag. Wait, let me use a tag with the size. Uh, here, uh, here, here, the size of this thing. All right, this looks better. All right. So now we have the points here. Yeah, this is weird. This, all these elements here, you see how they, they should all have eight neighbors. Okay, so there's something wrong. Uh, this is going to happen a lot, okay? So <laughs> just bear with me. Okay, so we have top flat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight checks. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, this is the problem with copy pasting. I told you, never, never copy paste whenever you can, okay? See what I did here? When I deleted the previous thing that I copy pasted, I, I also deleted this one line of code that is adding one element to the list. Uh, so this, you see, now everything is kind of working better. So let's see if we have the right amount of neighbors. So these guys have eight neighbors. This guy has seven because it's missing this one. This one has three, two, three. This five has like all these things here, four, all these things here, Five is this one, three is this one, one is the one in the corner. So this is looking much better to me. Uh, this is looking much better to me. So now let's see if that fixed the problem. So I have this, this should pop up, this should pop up, this they do pop up because they have three neighbors, three neighbors, this one doesn't. And what about survival? Which ones survive? Is there anyone surviving? Should anyone survive? This one survives, is the only one that I can see really surviving because, because it has three neighbors. That makes sense. Okay. I think, I think we're good. I think we're good. So what were the problems that we fixed? We fixed this being a number two, we fixed this stupid thing that I had, this weird copy pasting that I had done here. This, all this copy pasting that I had here badly. Uh, and what else did we fix, guys? Mm -hmm. Text out, lawyer card, yeah. Um, I fixed. What did I fix? I fixed, yeah, I think that's what I fixed. Um, okay, so I can go back to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I had this as a visualization, okay? This were the dots. Um, new iteration, previous iteration. These were the dots, which I'm going to remove. The, this is the number of neighbors, which I was going to remove. Actually, that was a really good thing. Um, I don't know who su somebody suggested that I add those. That was a really good call because it made things more legible. Um, I may want to do more of that in the future. That was a good call. Uh, it made things easier to visualize. Yeah. Uh, and um, are we still good? This, this, this pops up, pops up. Yeah. Uh huh. It looks good. Looks good to me. Okay. All right. So, and this was number, uh, number two, which as you can see, changed changes the rules very drastically. Okay. So where was I? Okay. So let's go back to recording. <sighs> All right. This happens a lot in the real world too. Okay. <laughs> so, um, just be patient. Um, we, we learn a lot with these things. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to go back to the errors. And then what else? Um, what am I going to do afterwards? 
I'm just going to wrap this up a little bit and I'm going to add like a like number of iterations uh, so that we can scroll over them. That could be interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, it took us some time, but uh, we found the problem. If you want to see uh, what happened and how we found the problem, uh, there will be a link on the video to the original recording. So you can just um, uh, check it out. But basically, there were two problems. One was that I, I made a mistake. And uh, as I discussed when we were uh, showing the, um, as I discussed before, um, when we were showing this, I showed that the birth rate should be three for the original Conway um, game of life. And I, instead of that, I wrote the number two here. So we need to change this to number three. And the other thing that I, that I had incorrect was that during copy pasting, I made a huge mess here at the at the very end, what it says bottom right. Uh, and I had like all this like nasty code that was like, kind of like I did, I had done something like, like there was something like this going on. So you just need to go back to bottom right and clean up the end of this and remove um, everything that was uh, all the extra bad code that was there. Um, but now we have something that makes more sense because you see, these are the original ones. And the new ones that are popping out are these ones with three neighbors, this one with three neighbors, this one with these three neighbors, this one with these three neighbors, uh, this one with three neighbors, but not this one that has four. Um, and here, this one is popping up, this one is popping up, this one, and this one is staying. You can see that it's staying alive because it has three neighbors only. All right, okay. So it looks like this is working correctly. Great, so it's working, uh, but um, it's only working for one state. So it's only doing this computation just once, right? What we would want to do is we would want to control how many of these iterations are going to happen. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and like add another parameter to the component where it says how many iterations I want to go through. Um, so um, Rosa survival right, um, I'm going to add another parameter here called iterations, which is going to be of the type integer. And I'm going to plug in here a slider. I'm going to move things out of here a little bit. It's a little busy. Um, I'm going to add a slider that I'm going to set to the value of one. And the only thing that I'm going to do is here in um, where I have my code, what I say, let's calculate how many uh, how many, let's say calculate what are the new cells, okay? What I'm going to do is this double for loop where I check, what I check every, um, what I check every, uh, can I say this? What I check, this, 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 what I'm, what I check in every, um, when I'm, <laughs> when I'm checking the float array every iteration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it inside of a for loop so that we do this operation multiple times, okay, over several, uh, over several um, iterations. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this here and I'm going to say for int k equals zero, k has to be less than iterations and k plus plus, and then I'm going to add a closing curly bracket all the way down here. Okay. So let's take a look at this. If I run this code, it is not going to work. Because first, now I only have one iteration. But also, because if I crank it up, you can see that nothing is really changing. And it's not changing because if you look at the code carefully, you can see that um, that you can see that when I take values for the calculations, what I'm doing is I'm still always taking from cell array and cell array is the array that had the original data that is coming into the component. Okay, so no matter how many iterations I do, I'm always computing over the initial data, I'm not computing over the last iteration of cell calculations that I made. So we need to change a little bit of the code here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, um, I'm going to first say, this is going to be a, the new cells is going are going to start as a copy 
of the original data that I had. So instead of creating a new empty array, I'm just going to copy the array. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to overwrite the data constantly. And then here, instead of looking at, um, instead of looking, can I do this actually? A new state? No, I can't really do this. Um, no, this is not a good way to do it. Um, so what I can do is I can say uh, new cells is going to be. Uh, okay, I'm going to pause here. How can I do this? Um, yes, so we can say previous state and new state. Uh, so if I do Boolean and I say previous state, that's going to be equal to, for example, uh, previous state and new and new state. And then inside here, and I'm going to initialize this. Um, um, and previous state as an initial situation is going to be cell array. I'm going to copy that. And then here, what I want to do is like new state every time is going to be the new Boolean. Uh, and this is the one that I'm going to write over. Uh, This is just easier. I mean, should I just move? Should I just move to um, uh, making the, this data persistent? Now, let me just um, continue what I was doing. Uh, we could create a new cells. Uh, and every time we say previous state is equal to the new state and the new state is empty. Uh, previous state is equal to the new state and new state is an empty array. And then here I initialize new state to be cell array, which gets copied here. Um, I think this should work. No? Error. Uh, uh, oh, and I have um, uh, here I have previous state, I have, yeah, so let's just call this previous cells and new, new cells, um, previous cells, equals it, and then previous cells equals new cells and new cells gets reset. And then we run this, I still have error, the user, uh, okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to say this is going to I'm going to initialize this new cell array and this new cells is going to be a previous array is going to be equal to a new boolean value uh, previous cells are going to be equal to new boolean value and previous cells equals new cells. Okay, and as I do that, uh, new cells equals new state. Uh, oh, I have to change this from previous cells here, 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 yes, here, 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 and here. And do, 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 do. Uh, it looks like something's happening. Da, da, da. And is that making sense? Yes. And now we should have one, two, three pop up here, right? We should have two. No iteration is zero. One iteration is now we should have three pop up here and three pop up here. Oh, that's great. And then we should have this doesn't pop up. Uh, 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 
and then here ah uh, oh it's happening yay <laughs> all right okay so let me undo all those changes and go back to uh what i was um which was here and then cell array was this and 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 this and, this. and uh, yes yep that's where we are etc control scroll what is control scroll Rodolfo what do you need? Uh, is the text too small? Is that the problem? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, the text size. Yes. All right. Yeah, I can do that. I can have the text a little larger. All right. So let's let's um, let's take a look at this. Let's record. Yes. So the way to do this is going to be. It's going to be easy. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to work a little bit with the arrays and I'm going to make a couple of changes here. So um, what I'm going to say first is I'm going to create a, an, an array that is going to be called previous cells that I'm going to initialize to a new Boolean array with columns and rows. And we already know this. All right. Um, and I'm going to create also a new array that is going to be called new cells. And I need to create these two arrays because like every iteration, I will need to look at the previous cells that I generated. I will need to crunch some numbers and then create another array with the new state. And then for the next iteration, switch them. Whatever was new now becomes previous. And then I create new, I crunch more numbers and create a new state. So I'm going to keep switching back and forth between these two. Now, what's interesting is that uh, at the beginning of each checking, I will need to switch those two states. So switch previous cells with new ones. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say um, uh, whatever whatever was new before now is going to be previous, and then I'm going to reset new cells to become something new. This is redundant. We don't really need this, but it's just good practice, just so that we know mentally. Okay. Uh, and something that I would like to do as well is I would like to change here uh, what I say new cells. New cells are basically what just came from the um, from the component because we need we need when we run this for the first time we need something here to become the previous state of our calculation. Okay, so um, so we're going to do this here, and we also need to change something, and we need to change that when we read from top left, top right, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, instead of reading from the cell array, we need to read from the array where we're keeping the previous state of our cells. So what I'm this is this one here. So cell array, cell array, cell array, blah, 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 another one, another one, and another one. Okay. And here by the end of the for loop, we set the value of what you just calculated into the new cells array. So that makes total sense to me. I'm going to run this code and it looks like it runs OK. And if we go to zero, this is great. We didn't perform any calculations, so we still have the original state. But as we crank up, we go one, two iterations, three iterations, four iterations, five iterations. This is really cool. This is starting to look uh, to look interesting. All right. So let me just work a little bit. Take, take this. Let me make this a little bit more visual if possible. Let me take the actual rectangles, the outlines, um, of the, of the cells. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah. And let's, let me just, um, ah, that's fine. We, so we can take, this guy's here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I was calculating it with the points of the grid. So with the corners of the grid, uh, why don't we just do this with the actual rectangles? Okay. So let me switch everything to uh, 
rectangles. I'm going to create these boxes here and I'm going to just plug everything in here. Um, and I, this is not working anymore. So I'm going to calculate the center of those of um, of that polygon. So I'm going to do that by saying by using the area component that calculates centers of things. That's going to be the points that I want to use here. Okay. Um, and, um, and I'm going to have to change this, I'm going to plug in here. Because now it's not that is not corner points It's the actual rectangles. Now it's different, you know. Uh, so now you can see that we actually do have cells. And as I do this, maybe we want to create planar, uh, planar surface boundary surfaces so that it's like, yep. And, uh, and now let's, let's iterate this 0 1 2. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> okay, how is that looking? Uh, it's looking cool, huh? Let me crank this. Let me crank this up a little bit. Uh, so, okay, and then boop, 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 boop. Da, 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 da. and then we can now. Uh, I like how it's kind of sticking to the original. I find it strange that it's not getting outside of the, that original. Um, but there's. Mm, but maybe that's that's how it that's how it is given this initial condition. I don't know. Well, there's definitely an error here because here this three should become this three here. This this one. This two should not pop up. Ah, uh, so something is not working. Ah, uh, okay. But we can take a look at this sometime sometime later. Um, all right. So what are we going to do next? Um, let me take a look at that error and see if we can fix it. Okay, why is that not working? I thought we had fixed everything. Uh, So that looks good to me. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. And here in new iteration, uh, we can uh, output previous cells here. Uh, so now when I iterate, the new iteration is green, the old, the older is red. You see, this should not be here. This one should also probably not be popping up. This one is good. This one Staying alive is good. This one is staying alive is good. This one is staying alive is good. All these guys. <clears throat> now, this one should stay alive because it has two neighbors. Uh, okay. Um, Uh, this one is good. This one should die. This one should stay alive. So this one is the old one. So that should stay alive. Why is it not staying alive? Because it has two neighbors. And now this one is the previous state. This should not pop up. This should pop up. This should pop up. This should stay alive. This should stay alive. This should stay alive. That's fine. 
Okay, let's take a look at popping up. Did I change something when I was looking into this? Did I change something that um, did I change something that we undid? Okay, I'm going to add the number of neighbors again um, thing here so that we Entropy variable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. A is n count for the last iteration. Uh, okay. And we are going to. We're going to use the tag. Uh, to list uh, the location, so that's going to be all these points here, the tag, oops, uh, okay, <clears throat> I hope, I hope this doesn't blow up because I didn't save it. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't saved it in a while because um, I'm plugging a, a, a data tree to a non-data tree. So now it's trying to crunch like 4 million of these tags. Uh, well, we can get this, the auto, the auto save. Um, uh, okay. I'm going to flatten this. Okay. Uh, and then the size of these guys is going to be something smaller, please. And we have to keep in mind that this is okay. four. So this is four. So, okay. So this is for the previous state. So this looks correct to me, the number of neighbors. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. This is good, good, good. Three, two. This has four neighbors. This has four neighbors. Three, three, one, two, two. Two, three, 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 two, one, one, two, three, three. Blah, blah, blah. Two, three. Three, not six. So the number of neighbors looks correct to me. Uh, and this is the new iteration. No, this is the previous one. This is the previous iteration, exactly. And clearly, for the new iteration, this guy survives. This guy survives. This guy survives. Good. This guy has two na two neighbors, but it still pops up. So that is not correct. So this is this is the new iteration. Okay. This guy has two neighbors and is popping up. This guy is also wrong. It should not pop up with just. Okay, so let's see if. Okay. This guy has two neighbors and he's popping up. Am I confusing? Am I flipping uh, things? So this guy is surviving with three neighbors. And these guys are popping with two and with three. Am I flipping things here? Okay. If the cell was dead, then if the previous state, ah, fuck me here, cell array. Okay. 
sort of. <laughs> I'm, I'm, because I keep looking at the original, original, original uh, cell. Yes, copy pasting, guys. Bad decision. This should be here. Okay, previous cells. Okay, and then let's change this back to three. Okay, and then here. Okay. So we go back to zero. Okay, one, two, three. This looks good. This one stays alive because he has three neighbors. Four. People with two stay, people with three pop up. This one has two, doesn't pop up. Two and three stay. All right, so this was the problem. Okay. You see, copy pasting is the devil. <laughs> or changing things, uh, for that matter. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> I'm going to hide this. I'm, I'm not going to delete it anytime anymore. Um, so, here I'm going to go back to one. And this was here. Where did I change it? Here. It was cell array, right? That I changed it. Uh, okay. Okay, so that's why for the first iteration it worked well, but not for the rest. <clears throat> okay. So let's get let's get recording. Yes, we found the problem. It took some time, <laughs> but we did. And again, it was due to like uh, making these things real quick and not caring about uh, things that we were changing. So it turns out that I forgot that all the way here in the for loop, when I was going over and over, I always kept looking at the previous state from the original cell array. But now that I have, I'm using these two arrays to keep track of previous states and initial and new states, this should be coming from the previous cells array. All right. Um, and now that we have this, uh, I want to show you while debugging, I created, um, I created an, an array of integers that displays how many neighbors each of the cells has. And uh, we can see that now it is working well. So for uh, you can see that the elements that are popping up are the ones that have three neighbors and also the ones that are remaining have three neighbors as well. But if I keep going, for example, iteration number two, uh, iteration number two, you can see that cells with two neighbors remain, cells with three neighbors pop up, but nobody else does. So I'm going to go to iteration three and you can see how uh, uh, cells with two and three neighbors uh, remain, but uh, cells with three neighbors pop up. So I think things are working right now. All right. Yay. <laughs> okay, we got it. It's working great. Um, now, one thing that I don't like about this is that we have to manually iterate with this slider, uh, which might be okay for certain situations, but it's not a great thing to do. And also, if we were to crank this up to, for example, let me save this file first. If we were to crank this up to, for example, 100, it would take some, you see how it took some time to calculate because it actually has to go through all the iterations before it reaches 100. No matter if before we were at, for example, 99, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, this is looking good. Uh, so, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the code that we have written so that instead of having a for loop that does all the iterations, we're going to have a persistent state. So we're going to calculate uh, every time just one iteration, but we're going to implement a rule where we're going to tick the component every like 100 milliseconds to perform one extra calculation and have this evolve autonomously over time. Okay. Uh, that's going to need a, a couple changes, but, um, it's going to be super cool. Okay, how am I going to do that? Um, I'm just going to move. Let me take. Let me think ahead of this. 
I'm going to just here uh, on the custom additional code, I'm going to write there the float array that is going to contain the persistent um, the persistent data. Uh, and I will show you, I will explain why that is going to be the case. Uh, and then I'm going to remove um, all this idea of um, um, the iterations. And then I'm going to remove this. And uh, <clears throat> previous cells. And I'm just going to keep previous cells is going to be the element that I'm going to move outside. I want to do that previous cells so that I can just um, here create new cells is going to be equal to um, so that every time I look, I look at uh, previous cells. Yep. And then by the end of it, new cells becomes this one and I save that as previous cells. Huh, okay. All right, this is taking longer than expected, huh? Huh? Okay, but we're almost there. We're very close. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to go back to zero here. I'm going to go back to one, for example. Okay. So <clears throat> Yes, the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a technique um, in C sharp scripting components, which is that we're going to create persistent data. What do I mean by that? Um, whenever I create a C sharp scripting component, you can see that the component, all the code that I write, the code that makes things actually is inside of this private void function uh, that extends all the way until the end of the of the component. Um, this is basically a function that contains the solver, what we're trying to do with this component. The problem is that due to the rules of variable scoping, what happens is that any data that we create inside of this function is going to expire is going to stop existing once the function finishes executing. All right. Um, we can still output some of that data by doing this technique. So this is where we output our data. But um, that only outputs the that doesn't keep anything in memory within this component, uh, everything refreshes. So what I would like to do is I would like to figure out a way to keep some data in the memory of this component. So that next time that I run the component, I can access that older data work with it as part of what I'm doing, and then use it to export or to output more information from this component. Um, this is uh, this what I'm technically this is called creating persistent data in the component. Um, and the way you do that is by adding the data that you want to be persistent all the way at the end of the C sharp scripting component here where it says custom additional code. Here is an area where you can create create persistent variables. And these variables will keep their value over instances of this component running over and over again. So no matter how many times I update this component, um, it will always give me it will always uh, maintain this data. So for example, one trick that I can show you guys is let's say let's, um, let's keep track of how many um, how many times this component has been updated, update count. Uh, so I can create a variable outside here called update count. And then here during the outputs, I can say, I'm going to up this value by one unit. And I'm going to output it here on a an output that I'm going to create right now. So here I'm going to say B. Okay. And you can see how um, you can see how B right now has the value of one because it, this component has been updated, has been has been doing calculations once. And then the interesting thing is that now if I change any of the inputs, you see how the the component calculates again, refreshes. And if as soon as I 
go up or down or anytime I perform any calculation, this component is adding one unit to this. And it doesn't matter even if I remove this, you know, it still gives me another update and another update. So just any single time, any single component, any single input of the component has changed, I refresh the value of update. What I'm doing with this is I'm creating persistent data that then I can use across, um, across the life of the component beyond the changes that are coming from the input. So why, am I, what I, why, would I, why would I want to do this? I want to do this because um, I want to do this because since I am always working with two states, the previous state of the analysis and the next and the new state of the evolution, I want to be able to keep in, I want to be able to keep the previous state as persistent data so that the next time that I, cal I calculate, um, um, I fetch that data, I crunch the numbers and I output the values. So let me do that right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to remove I'm going to remove these iterations because I don't need this anymore. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, before here, I had a for loop where I had um, how many times I was, how many times I wanted to calculate. We're not going to do that anymore. I'm going to remove this for loop here. Okay. I'm going to remove this that I just created as well. And then what I'm going to do is that previous cells, which is the array that kept um, where I was before, I want to use that. Um, I want to I want to use that as persistent data. So I want to keep how many cells were in my previous iteration. I want to keep that as a value across the life of this component. So I'm going to move this here, down here. I'm going to remove this because I don't have this anymore. Um, and then what I'm going to say here is um, is at the beginning of the component, I'm going to say um, initialize calculations. So if reset equals true, then what I want to do is I want to say I want to take previous cells and make it equal to the value that is coming or oh, sorry, Ooh, I want uh, I want to I can turn I, I can I can actually just copy and paste this in here, and then say, uh, I'm going to compute, I'm going to initialize previous cells to be this array, and I'm going to take this, the, what's coming from off as data, and I'm going to, um, I'm going to put it in here, so that I initialize the previous cells array, and I don't need this anymore. Um, here, uh, I don't need this anymore. Uh, I don't need this anymore either. And then new cells is going to be a new array. Um, blah, 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 blah. Previous states, I'm taking it per, from previous cells. That is correct. New cells becomes uh, the new state. Um, and I need to make sure that after I output, I in previous cells, I store the value of new cells for the next iteration. Store new cells for next iteration. All right, let's see what mess have I done. <laughs> the name cell array does not exist. So line 74, where is this 74? It's his previous cells. You see, copy pasting. Um, then the name new cells that not exist line 87. Well, because I have not declared this, you're right. So this should be a Boolean oh, like this. Okay. Um, and then 103 preview cells. Um, okay, this is preview cells is uh, not sent to an instance of an object. Okay, so I need to reset. Okay, and as I do reset, I let this go. Um, you can see that now I get um, and now as I did let this go, I have calculated one iteration. 
Um, so that was here, that is here. Um, yep, so I, it looks like the data is now persistent and I can calculate uh, things across time. But then how do I actually make this evolve? So how do I make more iterations, more calculations? Um, I need to make this component update more. So I need to force it to calculate more times. So there are two ways that I can do that. One is I can use a ticker technique. So basically I can just add a, an output, whatever, I can just call this ticker. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't matter what it is because the only thing that this is, the, that the only thing that this is useful for is to force a change in the component. So for example, let's see, I click this to true so that I reset. I set this to false, it updated once. And now every time I change anything on the inputs, you can see that this calculates. What I'm doing here is I'm basically by changing one of the inputs of the components, the component knows that it needs to re-update itself, whether if it's using this input or not, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that is one technique, but we're still using this like crappy, like a uh, button kind of interaction, which I don't like. So I'm just going to remove that. Uh, and what I'm going to do is the other technique, which is the coolest one, which is that I'm going to use a timer. A timer is a component that basically does what I just described, but under the hood. A timer is a component that forces another component to update via ticking it um, um, uh, at a certain at continuous intervals of time. So if I place a timer here and I plug it in here, you can see that this timer every one second is going to tell this component, can you please update? Can you please update? Um, and then you can see that now we are getting, we're getting these updates and I can actually change the interval. Uh, to 100 milliseconds, for example, and my definition is super slow for some reason. I don't know what's going on here. It shouldn't be this slow. Uh, but yeah, game of life. Whoa, that was a lot. Uh, what is taking up so many resources in my computer? Uh, Rhino, uh, Firefox. Okay. All right. And I can reset this. So, yep. Boom. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, that was a lot. Can you guys see how it's happening? Huh? It's definitely not updating at 100 milliseconds per second. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, this is like very laggy for some reason. Yeah. Um, I think there might be something not working great here. Um, but um, do I have the, the profiler? Do I have the profiler? No. 200 milliseconds. Oh, this thing is still rendering. So that's what is taking so much. Ah, okay. Did you guys see that? The rendering of the points was taking like a lot, even though it wasn't even showing up. So that's why it was lagging so much. Uh, so now if I connect the timer here, let's indulge. Ah, uh, and do, 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 do. Yay! <laughs> Game of life! Woohoo! Okay. <clears throat> Let me, and you can see here, you can see how it wraps. Uh, it goes from the bottom to the top. Um, and these guys here, these are known to be stable configurations. So these ones, and this is also going known as being a, an infinitely, infinitely repeating configuration. Uh, so yeah, so this is going to stay like this forever now. 
Uh, okay, so it's a little late. Uh, it took me a while to put this together. Um, so what should we do? Um, I may want to I may want to wrap up with some conversations, some thinking, uh, some conclusions. Um, but it's a little late and I have a meeting at one. So I think what I'm going to do is that um, I'm going to wrap this up now. So finish the, this video part. Um, but I still want to do the data trees part. Uh, so maybe that's going to be the second part of the video. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to wrap up this one video. I'm going to record the introduction, and then um, I'm going to record the introduction, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to record this afternoon. So what is it? 1 p.m. Let me check my let me check my calendar. Uh, what do I have? Yeah. So yeah. So I'm going to go have lunch. And then I'm going to, I have a meeting at one. So how about I'm going to, I'm going to come back and like record again at, at 3 p.m. My, my time. So 3 p.m. Boston time, uh, which I don't know where that is for you guys. Uh, but uh, I will, I will do another, another stream. Um, just um, if you subscribe to my channel, you will get a notification of when I go live again. And then I will just finish this. Uh, I, I will do the data tree operation. I will finish the component. Uh, and then I will do like the surface part, um, which is going to be a second video. Yes, uh, that should be cool. Um, and then we can do perhaps we can do some Q&A. Uh, let me wrap up this video. Um, let me wrap up this video here. Yes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay, so let's wrap up this video. Awesome. So as you can see, I can turn on and off. Um, I can turn on and off uh, resetting this and I can plug in a timer uh, so that we get the evolution and we get one iteration every 100 milliseconds. I can restart this again by toggling this. I can, for example, I can reshape this curve, uh, make it bigger, for example. Uh, let's see how that looks. Uh, uh, and let's see. Oh. That evolves terribly. <laughs> that was so not cathartic. Okay, so let's take a look at this instead. Uh, okay, so I don't like that. Let's go back to where we were. Okay. <laughs> okay. Turns out that we had a really nice curve, apparently, you know? So yes, so now it's working and all these cells are evolving over time. Uh, so, uh, so that's great. So it took me a little bit to to finish this one part with all the back and forth. As you can see, I didn't really prepare much. Whoa, that pattern is looking really cool. So it took me like a little bit of time uh, to do this first part where I did some simplifications. Wait, let me check. Oh, cool, we are, we're wrapping. So it took me like a little bit of time. Uh, I'm going to make this faster by cleaning up any, nothing that I, uh, things that I don't need for rendering. And so it's gonna it take me a little bit. So this is gonna be the end of, part one, um, where I'm going to, um, where I used a simplification of the data into the component in order to um, uh, make things a bit faster, which wasn't that fast anyway. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to record another video where instead of simplifying the list and flattening it, oh, look, a glider, it's going, that guy is going to keep going and going diagonally, let's crank this up, let's make this faster. It's going to keep going and going, oh, you see the tiny, tiny guy. Come on. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, so I'm going to, and it's going to wrap around and now it's going to hit, it's going to hit this guy and they're both going to blow up. Come on, come on. Nice. <laughs> that was cool. 
Uh, so maybe we got another glider spinning out. Uh, so yeah, so I'm going to, sorry, I got distracted. This is really cool. So I'm going to record now another video, part two, where I take the list of data as a data tree. I work with that data tree and I output a data tree with the same structure so that we can use this component that we just created for anything that gives me a two-dimensional grid of objects in, um, in tree form. Okay, so thanks a lot for holding on uh, and, um, and yep, yeah, and see you on the next video. All right, and before I go for lunch, I'm going to record the introduction. Okay, and the introduction is going to be uh, like this. Uh, um, <clears throat> Hi, and welcome to this video where I am going to implement what is called the John Conway's Game of Life, which is a cellular automata rule for evolving grids of two-dimensional objects uh, in a way that it feels like uh, they are tiny cells that are alive or dead and they're reproducing and popping out. And if I may show you a demo of the thing working right now, uh, I can activate the simulation and you can see how from an initial state, there is this kind of like situation of cells uh, looking at each other and reproducing and popping up and down. I think it's a really cool thing. Um, and I'm going to do it in two parts. This first part that you're watching at is a part where I'm going to do some certain simplifications for the sake of speeding out the process. So I'm going to take data, I'm going to oversimplify that data to make the process a bit faster. And then, so what you will learn in this video will be to use two dimensional arrays and to use this technique where we can use persistent data in a C sharp component to, um, to, um, to be able to use that data over iterations of calculations. Uh, in the second video, what I will teach you is to do the exact same thing, but instead of simplifying the data using data trees natively, and therefore, um, and therefore, be making the code a bit cleaner and more uh, and more compatible with the general ecosystem of Grasshopper. Did you guys see that 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 crash that just happened right there? And how like this is going to blow out? How cool is this? Uh, okay, so stay with me. And uh, this is a bit of an advanced. Um, an advanced uh, tutorial. So if you're not very familiar with C Sharp yet, uh, I would like to recommend you to check my C Sharp tutorials that I have not yet recorded, but whenever I do, they will show up on the video description, on a card somewhere here, etc. etc. Okay. Uh, but stay with me. This is going to be a lot of fun. Okay. All right. And we're done lunchtime. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. I'm not going to do Q&A right now. I will do it after I record the second video uh, this afternoon. So if you want to, um, if you want to join me, um, remember, I will be streaming at right now is 1245 my time in Boston, I will be streaming at 3pm my time. So in two hours and 15 minutes. Um, you will see a notification of my stream whenever I go, whenever I go live. Okay. Um, thank you and see you.